All right, so let's explore that a little bit more and see a bit more of what's going on with the chart below. Now, this is going to be real tedious to fill out. So what I did was I named my functions. So first of all, this is 2t, this is 3t, this is 6t, right? This is the velocity of that, which is the derivative of that, which is 2, 3, 6, and so on. And then the acceleration would be 0, 0, 0. So that's the, the first one. And then L2, which I did in purple, was 4t, 6t, 12t, which is 4, 6, 12, which again has acceleration of 0. You'll, you'll notice these two really actually have velocity that's constant. Okay, but what about the pink one? Well, the pink one's different. <laughs> so, or the magenta one. This is 2t squared, 3t squared, 6t, oops, 6t squared. I'm going to write my squared before I wrote my t. Like that. So its derivative is 4t comma 6t comma 12t. And therefore, its acceleration, that's not a constant. That has a t in it. So acceleration is not 0, 0, 0. It's 4, 6, 12. Interesting. And then last but not least, um, this was 2t to the 1 half, 3t t to the 1 half, and then 6t to the 1 half. Now, I'm writing it that way because, of course, we're going to take the derivative, and it's easier to take derivatives with 1 half powers. So bring the half down. This would be 1t to the negative 1 half. In other words, 1 over t to the half. Bring the half down. This would be 3 over t to the half. Actually, 3 halves t to the half down here. And then bring the half down. That would become 3 and then it'd be t to the half down here. Ugh. Now, before I go any further, I can check myself because I already did it. <laughs> so I said to Maple, hey, find me the derivative of L1, L2, L3, L4, and it did it. So there we go. You can see that I'm right. My accelerations are, or excuse me, my velocities are correct. And then the accelerations I can see is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Sorry, let me make all of these bigger so you can see them. And then I told it to take the derivative of velocity, and I got 4, 6, 12. And then the derivative of that fourth velocity one, because it would have t to the negative a half in it, it works out to be what you see there. So I just filled that in in the chart right there. Okay, so now I want the positions for all of these. So I want to substitute 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 into my original L functions, right? So these four are really the L functions, right? And I also want to make a little note. These two have a constant velocity. Just something to note for the 2, 3, 6, and the 4, 6, 12. Those are constants. They don't have... Uh, variable in them. These two over here have um, a variable velocity. Let me just write really small in here. Right. So they have a variable velocity because there's a t involved in their velocity functions. All right, so I just made Maple find me all these values by doing a substitute command, um, so the eval command. And I said, hey, <laughs> plug it in to all of those things, plug in t equals zero. And it just does it. So the first one, here, let me make this bigger so you can see. Because I'm going to pause and just go type these in. But 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, no shockers, right? And then when I put in 1, I get 2, 3, 6 for the first one, 4, 6, 12 for the next one, 2, 3, 6 for the third one, 2, 3, 6 for the fourth one. And then it's going to go like that. So I'm going to go write all these values down in the table. If you want to pause, you can do the same. And it just occurred to me, I'm going to re-graph these, and I did re-graph them, with 0 to 4 because that's our actual limit that we're looking at in the table. So there you go. It's the same graph. It's just not quite as long. All right, so you can see that they all kind of start off at 0, 0, 0. Right? That's no problem. And then they hit the same kind of ratio, 2, 3, 6, 2, 3, 6, 4, 6, 12 is just double that. And you can see they're hitting the same points 
but they're just doing it at different rates. This one is double that one. This one is even more complicated. It's getting faster and faster. So it hit the same value as the double one, but then it gets even bigger. Instead of just doubling again, it's going to 18 and then it's going to 32. So it's growing even more than that. And this one's actually slowing down. Right? That's why the acceleration is negative because it's two times the square root of two, then two times the square root of three, then two times the square root of four. Well, I shouldn't say slowing down, but it's, it's not going quickly. Let's put it that way. Okay, so that was all the positions. So you can see they all are the same ratio. So now what about the velocities? Well, I just took Maple and said, hey, find the velocities for those four parameterizations. And those values, oh, there's the positions, there's the velocities. So let me make them all bigger. And then we're just going to write them down on the table. And one thing to note is that the velocity had a t in the denominator, so we actually can't find the velocity for the fourth one because it doesn't exist. Well, it, it would be dealing with limits and all of that, so we're just going to ignore that one. <laughs> so, so we're going to do all the other things, which are all sitting right there. And for the record, sometimes it does this to me, <laughs> so I just want you to see. So v1 is in front, so v1 is 236, 236, 236 every time right? Except sometimes it's not. Sometimes Maple just messes with the order. When we put things in a, a list or an array like this, sometimes it doesn't put the order in. So we know that the second one should be 4, 6, 12. It has a constant velocity. We found the velocity vector right here. It's 4, 6, 12. Oops, there we go, right? So if it's 4, 6, 12, it should be 4, 6, 12 everywhere. The third one is the one where you have zeros in there that it should be 0, 0, 0. So even though I put them in the order of v1, v2, v3, it does not always give them to me in that order. So v1's right here, v2 is in the back, and then v3 is right here. It's annoying. I mean, if you want, you could sit there and list out each one individually so that you don't have to deal with that. But it's doing it again in the next one, right? So v2 is actually the last one on the list right there. At least I think it is. 4, 6, 12. Right? And then it's doing V3 and then V4. So it's just odd. <laughs> and even worse, like this one, it's putting V1 in front. This one, it's putting V4 in front. Who knows why? Nobody knows why. <laughs> V4 is the one with all the square roots in it, though, that, if that helps. And then V3 is actually pretty easy to find. So if you go back and look at the tables, you can see that these two vectors the first one and the second one, um, they have constant velocity. The velocity never changes. And that means I actually know the acceleration right now without even having to go to Maple. I mean, I can tell you that if they have constant velocity, their accelerations are zero all the way down. Right? It's got to be. All right. Whereas these two do not have constant velocity. They have a variable velocity and that means that their accelerations will be different and you can kind of tell by looking at it that's what I meant by slowing down it's increasing but it's increasing at a slower and slower rate because this one has a negative acceleration and this one has a positive acceleration but let's go see that from maple and then there we have it again you can see that it's kind of giving me all this grief now to be fair we don't really need A1 and A2. I mean, I can delete them out of there because all I really need is A3, right? And I can't do A4 because it has a division by T, so that won't work. So there's no point in looking at A1 and A2 because they're not going to exist. And I don't even know really what it was doing in here, but we're just going to delete those because all we need are the A3s and A4s. There we go. Oops, one more. There we go. All right, so I'm going to write those in the table. There we are. We have them back. <laughs> okay, so the accelerations for the first two, because they had constant velocity, their accelerations are zero. For this one, it had a non-constant velocity, had a variable velocity, but it was variable in the same way. So the accelerations all turned out to be 4, 6, 12. It had a constant acceleration, which if you look back at to how it, the velocity worked, it's because they were all linear factors, right? Whereas in this one, they're not linear factors. So not only is the velocity variable, but the acceleration is variable. And it's negative because the object has a positive velocity, 
but it's negative acceleration. So it's going forward, but it's slowing down. Now, what conclusions can we draw from all of this? What are some big ideas? <sighs> OK, so first off, different parameterizations of the same curve will follow the same curve or path. Right, space curve, if you will. <laughs> right, so they follow the same space curve, but they will have different velocities and different accelerations. So they're all going to get to the same points eventually. They'll all pass through the same paths. And of course, if they have different velocities and accelerations, is particularly velocities, that would also mean speed. Right? So they're going to move at different speeds through that same curve. It's very much like a racetrack, right? If you think of the straight curve as the path, as the racetrack, and then the four parameterizations are four different cars along that racetrack. That's what's happening. Right, so they're all going that same direction, but they're going to go at different paces and with different accelerations. And then, of course, some can have constant velocities as they move, and some can have variable velocities. So I just wrote that in. Some parameterizations will have a constant velocity, which means their acceleration would be 0, 0, 0, because they'll have nothing but constants in the three vectors. And some will have variable velocity, which means they could have a constant acceleration or they could have a variable acceleration. What's amazing is that just the vector notation compensates for all of this. You can show constant velocity, con variable velocity, constant acceleration, variable acceleration, just by writing it differently. But it's still just a bracket notation with three components. And that can show those graphs, that path, as well as imply the speed at which they're moving through those paths and the acceleration. So it's very simple mathematical notation, but it's very powerful because it's actually giving us a ton of information. And that's what's so amazing about being able to do motion in vector valued form.